Hey guys, Mrs. Fagerstrom here. It's been, I think, about a week since I've made a video and I was at home today and I kind of just decided it was time that I made another video. And I have been on Amazon ordering some new books by the author Erin Blabby. I don't know if you guys remember reading A Pig the Pug book, Thelma the Unicorn, but he is probably one of my favorite children's authors or kids authors. I got this new book called Pearl Bailey and Charlie Parsley. I also got another one here. What's this one? This one's called The Dreadful Fluff. And so I was thinking that I would read one of the new books that I got but the book that I want to read to you is called The Ghost of Miss Annabelle Spoon. I wanted to read you this book because this book is kind of about judging someone without knowing them. And I know as myself, I have done that before where I have looked at someone and thought, oh my gosh, they don't want to be my friend. They don't want to have anything to do with me. And then I kind of get to know them and I'm like, oh, I like them. I like this person. And so I wanted to read this book because I love the message. I love the author. I love the illustrations. You know I love to read these books. So I'm going to read you The Ghost of Miss Annabelle Spoon by Erin Blabby. Unfortunately, this book is not an AR book, so you won't be able to take an AR test on this. But it's always good to just listen to a book. It's a quick read. So I'm going to get started. The Ghost of Miss Annabelle Spoon. And look at it in this first picture. It is of an old guy in the bathtub with the ghost. Pretty funny. The village of Chui, seven miles from the sea, had a problem more awful than most. It was haunted and cursed. Yes, the folk feared the worst. Oh, the township was plagued by a ghost. So there's the town. No matter what hour, she lurked looking sour. Be it midnight or mid-afternoon, her dresses were shabby, her mood always grabby. Her name was Miss Annabelle Spoon. Bear with me when I read this book because I haven't recorded myself reading a picture book like this before. Oh, the horror, the panic. The townsfolk were manic. They suffered distemper and fits. Get that guy throwing his food up in the air. Let's see if you can get that. And there's the ghost in the corner. It was dreadful to see every poor soul in Chui simply petrified out of their wits. Enough is enough, puffed the mayor in a huff the, to a crowd who were equally cranky. Things must be improved. Yes, she must be removed. Then he patted his head with a hanky. So there they are, they're at the town meeting. Ooh, that one lady looks kind of mad. Kids are crying. But how, asked the baker, we'll just have to make her. The school teacher said with a scowl. The doctor cried, oh, we're all doomed, don't you know? And the wind through the trees, it did howl. Everybody's petrified. I like this guy's mustache. But just at this juncture, a small voice did puncture the noise in the room like a spear. It said, I just thought, I just thought that we ought to just ask the poor ghost why it's here. Well, the room it did stop. You'd have heard a pin drop and the terrified mob seemed to settle. Then they all turned to see who on earth could that be? It turns out it was young Herbert Kettle. Are you mad, asked the grocer. But Herbert said, no, sir. I think we should just ask her why. You're insane, spat the mayor, madly patting his hair. If you did that, you'd certainly die. But Herbert said, rot. Then he turned on the spot, and he marched to the back of the hall. You may think I'm a fool, but I'll talk to this ghoul. Wish me luck, and good night to you all. Oh, that Herbert Kettle, he is brave. He said, everybody's afraid of her. Well, I'm just going to go ask her. What's going on? What's wrong? Are you okay? It's a nice person. I don't want to be friends with Herbert. Well, rumor was rife that when not causing strife, 
The ghost had a house in the wood. So in search of Miss Spoon, only lit by the moon, Herbert set off as fast as he could. Through the dark, crooked trees, just as calm as you please, Herbert searched for the ghost through the night. Those are some big trees. Till he came to a dwelling where he'd no trouble telling all the rumors he'd heard been right. So that is, there's her house. It says Spoon because her name is Annabelle Spoon. He looks a little nervous. Hope he doesn't run away. Well, his nerve turned to butter as he peeped past a shutter and saw her sat there at her table. She was there in the gloom, quite alone in her room, looking spooky and somewhat unstable. I don't know. Look at her face right there. Look at her expression. I don't think she looks necessarily mean, more sad. Oh, he wanted to run, but his job was not done. You'll regret this, you dimwit, he swore. But although scared to death, Herbert held tight his breath and he opened Miss Annabelle's door. Oh, he shook like a leaf, but to Herbert's relief, what he saw took away all his fears. Oh, gosh. Yes, to Herbert's surprise, from Miss Annabelle's eyes came the sudden appearance of tears. I'm so glad you're here, said the ghost drawing near, and I do hope you'll stay for some tea. I could make you some toast, maybe whip up a roast. Oh, I'm raving, just listen to me. Look at her, she's like so excited. But then, would you care for a scone? The ghost, she went on. I'd have baked some if I'd, if only I'd known. Then she fell in a heap and she started to weep. I'm so tired of being alone. Well, it broke Herbert's heart when the ghost did impart. All I want in the world is a friend. But when I go out, people run, scream, and shout. I'll be lonely, I'm sure, till the end. Oh, she wept and she wept for such sadness she'd kept deep inside her for such a long time. And with that, Herbert knew what the good lad should do. In the distance, a church bell did chime. I feel like sometimes that happens where you just, it's not always a big thing that happens, but sometimes there's so many things that have happened. You just like have them inside of you and you push them inside and you push them inside and it's all these things and they just keep adding up and adding up. And then one day it's like one little thing happens and you just snap and you're upset way more than you should. But people don't always realize there's so many other things inside of you that had happened. That's why it's so important to make sure you're like talking to people about how you feel, people that you trust, like your mom or your dad or your grandma or your grandpa or your aunt or your uncle or your friend or your sister or your teacher or our counselor, Miss Peterson or me and Miss Young. Anyway, I'm going to keep reading. The young man said, Miss, I can promise you this. If a friendship is all that you need, well, you don't frighten me. You're as nice as can be. You can call me a friend. Yes, indeed. So there he's sitting. Look at he went and he kind of sat next to her to make her feel better. Poor Annabelle Spoon. Well, she thought she would swoon. Really? She asked through her tears. She can't believe somebody wants to be her friend. Yes, said the lad. That's the best news I've had, said the ghost, for the last hundred years. She's pretty pumped. And that's how it ended. The ghost's heart was mended, for friendship was all that she craved. Her sadness diminished. The haunting was finished. The town had been properly saved. And look at all the people. Everyone is happy. There's that mustache guy again. I really like that mustache. So if you're in Chui, seven miles from the sea, and you visit a tea room at noon, don't be unnerved if a table's reserved for the ghost of Miss Annabelle Spoon. Look at how much better she looks now that she has a friend. That is the end. Here's that little back page with, I think that's the mayor in the bathtub. That's a good one.
But after reading this book, it really makes me think sometimes that Herbert, I think his name was Herbert Kettle, he really took a chance with Annabelle and he decided she might just need someone to talk to. She might be a friend. So thinking about that just when we're at home and we have lots of time to think, I know I spend a lot of time thinking at home, that maybe I need to give people more chances. Maybe I need to branch out and make friends with more people. That's something that I definitely am thinking about after reading this book. I'm also thinking about making sure I'm letting the family and friends that I do have know that I'm thankful for them because they make it so I don't feel lonely for 100 years like that ghost. But I hope you guys are having a great day. I'm filming this on Friday. I think I'm going to upload it Monday to kind of have something fun for you to start your week. I hope you're having an awesome day. I sure miss you. I will be talking to you guys Monday when I upload this. So I hope you had a great weekend once you see this. And come see me on my Google Hangouts. I'd love to hear from you. Bye.